Google have recently launched the Chromecast successor, supporting a lot of smart home features and supposedly a lot of hardware and software enhancements. Is it any good? Let's inspect. Hey, buddy, great to meet you. I'm Michael. You can call me the Tech Mishka. And um, long story short, this is one device which replaces the use of a number of devices. Think of uh, Google Chromecast, an STB, a multimedia center, uh, Google Home Assistant and Smart Home Controller. All of that packed into the size of this good looking STB. It's called the Google Streamer, something that I bought a few months ago and use it actively ever since. Already gained enough of experience and I'm ready to talk about all the positives and negatives in this video so that you get the right kind of feeling whether the Google TV streamer is the right pick for you. We are about to test the performance as a starter. And before you get to see more results, let me underline that the Chromecast philosophy has never been to offer class-leading processor power or so. Therefore, it is fair to compare against the older Chromecast or third-party alternatives, such as the Mi TV Stick, the Fire TV Stick and similar. Compared to them, the Google TV streamer looks good. Snappy menus, quick installation of apps, very smooth operation of the interface. It is the kind of enjoyable experience that we are all used to get by Google. When it comes to a bit heavier tasks, such as gaming or so, first of all, most good games from Play Store are not accessible due to hardware limitations, but these that are compatible run just fine. Some artificial benchmarks underline the rather mediocre CPU qualities. Keep in mind that none of these tests are available to download directly from Play Store, so I had to sideload each one of them in order to get some data. Despite the unimpressive results, for the goals that the device has to accomplish, it is more than enough. And true, I did mention gaming a moment ago, probably the use case I'd recommend the least. Yet possible, a few basic racing titles are available in Play Store, you can also try sideloading some heavier ones, but again, don't have too high expectations. In most of the cases you would need a joystick, there are multiple compatible options as long as you use the Bluetooth protocol. And yeah, all of this could be quite fun. Concerning more of the use cases, this is where the Google TV streamer shines. First and foremost, it is among the most advanced Google Home Nests you can think of. Yeah, all of these devices controllable via your smartphone setup can be easily accessed via the interface. Now, if you are into smart home features, then for sure saying that the device supports both matter and threat protocols is great news. However, if you expect easy integration with devices such as Homey, this won't really work due to the lack of corresponding API. Acting as Chromecast means that you can cast with the device literally anything, and this is among the strengths. Just imagine having guests at home, and you want to show a photo or a presentation, it's just a few taps away from being displayed on the TV. Neat! You can use the Google TV Streamer as a fully functional alternative to a smart TV. Just connect to a monitor or TV with HDMI and use the interface. The IPTV subscriptions that I use work flawlessly and the interface is almost as snappy as what I would get with my TCL Smart TV from last year. And of course, we're going to dig deeper with the software, but let us first check about the hardware side. The design and the build quality precisely. I can only say good words about Google's way of presenting products this year. Nice and sleek. This is a tiny voice-enabled remote, still works with two AAA batteries, and besides the usual control buttons, has shortcuts about YouTube and Netflix. There is one button which is used for favorites, and you can either associate it with a favorite app or you can use it as a device input switch, which is rather unlikely to be your choice. If you hoped for a backlight, such one is not present with this new generation either. The TV streamer has two color options, very gentle finish of the plastic case, excellent build quality, rubberized bottom and Apple-like port setup. I say Apple-like because it is very modest. Honestly, the availability of a LAN port is a bit of a surprise here. A nice one though, HDMI and USB Type-C for power input. Sadly, Google provide no HDMI cable inside the pack. And that's right, no dedicated USB port for connecting any external peripherals. This namely is the other similarity to Apple. Need more ports? Get yourself a dongle. 
nothing official yet from Google, so you need to try some third-party options, preferably with PD support. Gonna link whatever is working on my end in the video description area. The tech specs are also a bit underwhelming. There's a quad-core CPU, 4GB of RAM, 4K 60p is the maximum output resolution, Dolby Vision, HDR10, HDR10+, HLG, they're all supported, there is dual-band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.1, 32GB of storage, and the operating system is Android TV. The hardware specs about this one are rather underwhelming, something which doesn't come as a surprise given Google's record to not include the latest and greatest in their devices regardless smartphones or streamers. Interestingly, they use a fairly outdated CPU, something that Amazon, another big player in this niche, have deployed in their Kindle Fire TV Stick Max in 2021 though, and uh, this processor inside happens to be slower even than the processor inside NVIDIA Shield TV, which was released about a decade ago, which doesn't sound very reassuring about using this device in the long run. A bit of a relief is the fact that we count on 4 gigabytes of RAM inside, which is definitely breath of fresh air. But uh, we have to admit that also performance with such kind of STBs has never been the top priority. The other thing which is a bit surprising is the distribution of the ports on the back because we don't have enough of USB ports over here. Yes, there are certain workarounds, not that nice though, and I think Google could have done significantly better with their hardware job. So definitely, when we think about overall specs, they sound limiting, therefore we have even higher expectations about the software. The user interface feels familiar, if you're familiar with the Android or Google TV family. Honestly, this is the shortest path to get up-to-date version of this operating system with all the licenses and the nice features that Google present and announce. A lot of config options are present, of course. The support for quick media switching is worth noting. It is an HDMI standard which reduces the time and the screen adjustments whenever you play multimedia file that runs in different resolution or refresh rates. You could additionally access a lot of video and audio config settings, pair external devices, set up controls for remote devices such as TVs and soundbars, and many, many other things. Google have done exceptional job about having all the popular streaming services certified. This includes Disney+, Apple TV, Amazon Prime Video, Netflix, and so on. Whatever you use likely is supported with this box. Since my ex-Jimmy projector at home doesn't support Netflix, I guess this is an easy way to get everything properly running. Connectivity-wise, well, the LAN port is the only visible good hardware thing, the Wi-Fi is dual-band, not even Wi-Fi 6, which means that the transfers would be rather slow. You could attach USB devices after all, but it requires a bit of patience, and having extra hardware about that is irritating at least. Also, the Bluetooth 5.1 feels like a very old generation of the protocol already, still compatible with almost everything else that is newer. At least, if you can't find the remote, you can use the smartphone as an alternative. Since there is no active cooling inside, the Google TV streamer is entirely quiet and stays rather cool most of the time. As for power consumption, it will hardly exceed the usage of a few watts, so it's something that you can run with a power bank for at least several hours. And before we get to give it a verdict, let me share with you my understanding about what is not that attractive with it. Clearly, the outdated hardware, the lack of more USB ports for peripherals, the lack of backlight for the remote control, the lack of Wi-Fi 6 and the unexpectedly high price this time. In the end, uh, the Google TV streamer is one of these devices which leave us with mixed feeling. Because on one side, yes, it's very unique. It's currently the only good hub which supports Thread, Matter, has Ethernet, can act as Chromecast, and uh, has proper voice integration for Google Assistant. On the other hand, the hardware is kind of limiting, the lack of ports is definitely irritating, and the fact that the price is now significantly higher than Google Chromecast is going to make a lot of people think twice before they buy it. And I honestly think that Google wanted to release this in order to make a point that they can still be better than the competition, such as the Mi TV Stick, the Amazon Fire TV Sticks, and everybody else. But 
I think that given the hardware specs, this is going to fail to impress all the tech enthusiasts. And yet, probably the best Google-made device if you're looking to get uncompromised Android TV experience with all the latest upgrades and security patches. So it's a bit confusing. And definitely on the hardware side, Google could have done significantly better job. At least this is my opinion. And I'm really curious to hear about your opinion in the comments. Feel free to share experience, tips and tricks, and potentially any questions you might have in regard to this particular device. I'll be very happy to help you and support you over there. Thanks a lot for watching this episode. In case you want to subscribe for more, then hit that particular button. Give me a like if you enjoyed the video thus far. And I, Michael the Tech Mishka, wish you a fantastic day. See you soon. Bye.